Hey, Sooner Football fans, this is your Sooner Football Fans Podcast. Terry and Rob are back from vacation and ready to talk some Sooner football. Today we have the creator of the Faux Mike Stoops Twitter account, Justin Miner, on from Fort Smith, Arkansas. We talk Sooner defense with Justin and find out what it's like to be the therapy Twitter account for Sooner fans frustrated with the defense. Sooner Football Fans is not associated with the University of Oklahoma, but we do have eligibility left. Boomer. Hey, Sooner Football fans. You got Terry and Rob here. Boomer Rob. Boomer Terry. And we're starting off the, uh, oh, the season, the kickoff for the season, the return from vacations with a new <laughs> format. Um, we're going to try this out. I think it's going to work out. It's going to be me and Rob for uh, a little bit, and then we're going to have our guest on, our fan guest, and we got some pretty cool stuff lined out. But we just got back from vacation, Rob. Mm-hmm. How was your vacation? <laughs> it was pretty good. Yep, pretty good. I played golf a lot um, by myself. Thanks, Terry. <laughs> and I uh, went to Buffalo Wild Wings by myself. Again, thanks, a lot. Terry. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> went to the movies a lot. How'd you shoot in golf? By myself. Uh, you know what? Better than I expected. <laughs> a lot better than I expected. Any holes in ones, birdies? A couple birdies, no holes in one. <clears throat> no, uh, n- n- none even really close. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, we went out to California, got to visit with the, the baby grandbaby, the two year old who is a complete hot mess. Um, and our oldest son, David, and we spent time at the beach, uh, spent time down in Hollywood. And did you see the freaks? Oh yeah. There are, there's freaks <laughs> everywhere down there. And, um, did you go by the University of Spool Children? <laughs> <laughs> that would be USC. USC. No, mm-hmm. I did go by uh, UCLA though, which yeah. still dumbfounds yeah. me that it's in Beverly Hills. Man, you can hit a golf ball from UCLA to Long Beach State. To, <laughs> I mean, they're all just right there. I mean, yeah. It, it, when we went to the Rhodes Bowl was when the first time I saw UCLA, and it is literally like a block off of Beverly Hills. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, I'm guessing that's kind of a rich rich kid school or well uh, here scotty my buddy out in la yeah. talk about it he says that usc is the rich school and it's in the middle of the ghetto so yeah <laughs> i don't i don't know i don't know but uh thanks to scotty since you brought him up that you know we had uh four very good seats to uh the rangers game uh dodgers Pirates. Oh, dodgers. dodgers good Pirates. god I said, what was the score of that game <laughs> it was like 18 good to 2 <laughs> <laughs> that was a beat down of massive proportions. Yeah, it it wasn't a game. It wasn't competitive at all, but it was a fun game to watch. Well, sure. Yeah. You know, lots because, of action. Yeah, lots of action, lots of hits, lots of doubles. Um, and, uh, but, you know, I, I sent you a text while we were there. It was, you know, mm-hmm. did you know this damn thing's on top of a mountain? <laughs> and <laughs> that if you not. haven't been to Dodger <laughs> Stadium, it is built on top of a mountain. They, like, cut the top off of a mountain and put a baseball field on top of it along with a parking lot um but it's right off of downtown it's a it's a beautiful scenery it's a lot like the rose bowl i mean it, it just the surrounding of it is just gorgeous hmm. and one of the things i like about it is you know with all the new technology all the teams now are putting up new screens and stuff they still they still have the old diamond shaped screens <laughs> out there that they've had forever and they've just replaced what's inside of them. So you, re, you, you know, some of the stuff, the heads, the top of the heads cut off because of it's, it's an angle. Yeah. But they've left the, you know, the aura of the old stadium there with those screens. That's so, good because they got plenty of money. Yeah, <laughs> they got yeah. plenty of money. <laughs> but, yeah. um, and Dodger fans, man, are nuts. I mean, <laughs> they, they love their Dodgers. You know, I don't know why we didn't go to that stadium when we were out there for the Rose Bowl. I guess probably because the Rose Bowl, but. Back when I was a regional director and I traveled a lot, uh, every big city that I went into, I always went to the baseball field. Yeah. I mean, wherever that's, you know, even if it was, you know, football season, I always went. Yeah, and just, seen the, just to see it. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been to quite a few. Yeah. And I toured several, but I've never been to Dodger Stadium. Uh, you know, I've I've been to what's uh, AT&T Ballpark there in San Francisco yeah. a couple times, two or three times. So that was pretty cool, but uh, never, never been to Dodger Stadium. Yeah, but it, it was definitely... Um, you know, a cool experience. And again, thank you, Scotty. But, 
Uh, I was repping the Oklahoma City Dodgers gear, and David was wearing the uh, Oklahoma Sooners gear. Of course. And uh, he got a couple of boomers ye- yelled out at him, of Ooh. course. <laughs> Even all the way in L.A. <laughs> and actually, when we first went in there, he went. Uh, his, his wife was about to starve to death. And so he went straight over, and he he didn't see the guy, but he walked past the guy wearing an Oklahoma football T-shirt. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and and uh, I said boomer to him. And, but, uh, I had a lot of comments on my, uh, Oklahoma Dodgers, Oklahoma city Dodgers hat. Yeah. And didn't you tell me that half of them didn't even know that yeah, the farm about club? Ha- half of them were like, Hey, that's a cool hat, you know? And, you know, and I said, well, you know, how, you know, how is it? You know, okay. LA, that's pretty cool. And I was like, well, that's the Dodgers farm club, triple A. Oh, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> now there was a few people that just walked up, loved the farm hat hat, you know, for, or, you know, a farm team hat, you know, yeah. they were like, Hey, that's really cool. And I said, yeah, I was from there. And so they asked me about the, you know, the team and the, um, you told them about the Sooners then? Oh, oh you're talking about, <laughs> okay, my bad. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, no, they were, um, you know, uh, you know, about the field and the following of the team. And I, you know, I told them it's about like any other triple A team, you know, if they're doing real good, normally there's good crowds there. Every time we've been this year, it's been a good crowd. And they were until, gosh, this last month, they took a nose. Right. Really. <laughs> good grief. <laughs> Round Rock beat them like 18 to two the other day. Oh, it was terrible. But, um, no, the Dodgers game was a lot of fun. I uh, didn't see LeBron. Uh, no? We were hoping to see LeBron, and Caleb would have been really pissed off. But Would he have been man-crushing on him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Caleb. Uh, no, but like I said, we went down to, um, you know, I put on uh, Twitter and Facebook that two things happened the first day we were in California was I paid $4.50 for a gallon of gas, and thirteen dollars for a pint of beer, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and the the four dollars and fifty cents for gas was kind of we just were needing gas, you know, just to top off our tank to get you know into Palmdale. wasn't sure I could get across the Mojave all the way. Well, for for that price, I could have brought you some. Yeah, and, and, and still <laughs> it was, yeah, it was it was horrible. What you know when when you see your you know uh, the dollar amount at you know thirty five, and you look down and there's like three gallons in the thing. <laughs> It was a bad deal. And then uh, Saturday night, we went to uh, um, an Oriental uh, festival uh, down at the racetrack. I think it's Santa Anita. Is that what's out there? Why well, you got to be racist? <laughs> it's what it was it's called. It's just a festival. <laughs> it was the Oriental Festival. <laughs> it was like a swap meet, craft show, and food. And um, my son, you know, David, he's a pretty smart guy. We buy one cup of beer, or he bought it. I didn't, the first cup of beer. Well, we pull around a wagon with the grandbaby in it and a ice chest <laughs> full of beer, and nice. you pour them into the cups. And we ran out, and I was like, I need one more beer before we hit the road, and went up to the Budweiser tent and a little cup, you know, like you get at the Dodgers games or stuff, $13. I was like, oh, God. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> oh, my gosh. So what I normally pay for a 12-pack in Oklahoma I got a cup of beer. Mm -hmm. So needless to say, we didn't do uh, very much carnival drinking after that. So, Mm -hmm. but a lot of stuff happened in the Sooners world while we were gone. I couldn't keep up with it. I tried. Wait, I want to know some more about this Oriental thing. Okay. (laughs) I'm joking. joking. (laughs) Uh, A lot of stuff happened in the, uh, you know, Sooner football. I tried to take notes, ask for some, you know, input from the fans out there i mean we got some new recruits committed uh woody washington a db and marcus majors uh the opening results um down in uh uh uh, frisco uh when the the uh seven on seven with spencer and the boys down there oh yeah yeah uh when they came from behind uh or came from the losers bracket and apparently just smoked everybody after and he got the his fifth star right? too right yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and spencer got his first uh fifth star uh jump gear came out uh mm-hmm. showing it with the smaller font um you know i don't it's you know hey it, it, apparently it's a huge thing with the recruits and it's a uh, you know one of the few schools you know um i do agree that it does kind of look like a upside down horn um, <laughs> if you look at it from afar <laughs> so, we're okay with that i guess 
Uh, the All Big Twelve team came out. The Big Twelve preseason rankings. Um, Jalen Redman has some health day, issues. Right? CD Lamb and stuff on him, and Media Day yeah. kicked off today. Yeah. So um, we're trying to catch up on everything, um, and uh, we're going to be kicking back into the the social media a lot harder now uh, that we got our feet back under us and. I got caught up at my regular job after being out because I was off two weeks. So I <laughs> um, had to kind of focus on that. Uh, you know, I got to pay bills. So, uh, but a lot of stuff went on. Um, anything jump out at you other than? <laughs> no, I was just talking to my, my buddy Scotty out in L.A. today. And uh, he pays for the, uh, like the Oklahoma package or whatever. And he's like the only one in California or whatever that has it. But he said he flipped it over there when he got off today and was at home. And uh, he said he grabbed a beer, put his feet up, and he was, you know, all excited to watch Media Day. And he said they had inserted the Texas Longhorn now <laughs> in there oh, for man. the media. And he's like, what is going on? He said I about threw the <laughs> beer through the TV or whatever. So it was pretty hilarious. So they just cut off the coverage out there? Well, um, so I guess it was Texas's turn or whatever. I don't think they're till tomorrow. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Well, he said he, the only thing he could get was the Texas Longhorn Network where he was supposed to be having media days. Scotty, you accidentally paid for the Texas Longhorn <laughs> Network, buddy. <laughs> I hope that's not the case, Scotty, because if it is, oh, my geez. Shunned. <laughs> yeah, I watched. Uh, about all I caught was I did a little bit of reading before I did watch uh, – uh, Lincoln's uh, press conference. That's about really all I got. I made some notes and stuff, but we're going to kind of save that the Big 12 media day for tomorrow. Uh, we got some guests coming on, some media folks coming on tomorrow, uh, and trying to get everything squared out with them. So we'll we'll do a full um, you know capture of all the Big 12 stuff, the Big 12 media days tomorrow. But um, hey, did you want to talk about soccer? Didn't they just uh, play no. like some soccer games or something? <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Some I don't even know who won. Uh, I, don't I mean, I don't care either. But yeah, <laughs> hey, and some some to do with tennis. Something happened. Yeah, some, Wimbledon. Some people. I don't know. Who, I know that somebody. Serena. Serena got beat. Oh, pretty. You know, I think she got thumped. Well, there's nothing to talk about then. Yeah, uh, we do have our uh, ESPN, the magazine body issue in. Flip through it. And Rob's already flipped through it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I hate Greg Norman. Yeah, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Greg. No, we won't even talk about the Good the men in the issue, but <laughs> yeah. seventy years old and Save some for the rest of us. Yeah, but uh, no, that came in. Um, you know, like I said I tried to keep up with stuff, but for, you know, spending time with the family and doing all that stuff just kind of I didn't. You know, just kind of pushed it back, and so. Uh, now getting back in gear to, you know, it's football season. We're getting close. I love it when Big 12 Media Day comes in and um, you know that it's just around the corner. So, uh, but um, other than that, that's about all we got. We, you know, we're getting caught up on our schedule. So we'll be contacting you guys out there pretty soon. Um, we got people scheduled through, fans scheduled. Where did my schedule go? I wrote it down. Um through the 13th, August the 13th, and then we're going to kick into a little bit different mode of getting more media types in, as well as some fans, people that have been on the podcast before. Going to have Tattoo back on, right? Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah, Good. we're going to uh, uh, we're going to have a bunch of guys filter back in, um, you know, for the, the preseason stuff, so we'll be reaching out to folks on that as well. Um, but with that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and get to our guest tonight, our Sooner Football fan guest. All right, Rob, we got our guest coming on with us now. Um, he uh, is the creator of the faux Mike Stoops. Mm-hmm. Uh, not fake Mike Stoops because there is a fake There Mike is one Stoops. of those two. Yeah. All right. Uh, but it is the faux Mike Stoops. His name is Justin Miner from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Boomer, Justin. Sooner. How's it going today? Man, it's going. It's been a little bit of a crazy day. I drove in from uh, down off of Lake Washita. My took my two days off and I went down and camped on an island down here close to hot springs on Lake Washita and I run in this afternoon trying to get my laundry done for the week and get set up to go to work tomorrow so 
It's now, a little bit of a crazy day, but it's been a good day. And now, how do you get to go I'm, camping on an island? I mean, <laughs> well, you have to you have to paddle your your, your tail out there, or if somebody, I'm out. Like, <laughs> yeah. okay. me and Rob are out. We I'm out. Out. <laughs> yep. I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, we but, yeah we we swim like rocks. So <laughs> right. Well, I paddle out there on the kayak today. Well, this weekend I went. There were some folks I knew down there, and they they kind of ferried me over on their bass boat, and that was. That was pretty nice. Like it's it's interesting. It's a different experience, but man, you get a lake breeze going, and like you can see the Milky Way, every star in the sky. Like, dang, it's a it's it's a really cool experience to do. Sounds nice. Yeah, so that does. I mean, it sounds like you had the 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 perfect weekend. I mowed my lawn that hadn't been mowed for two weeks because I was on vacation out in the high desert of California, where it's 112 degrees. Mm. But, right. <laughs> but right. um, you know, and redid and recleaned out my garage. That's what I did for my two days Yay. off after I got back. Where'd you go, Terry? Yeah. So, was that a honeydew or just? No, it's just, it's got to do. Right. <laughs> so, right. but, um, well, Justin, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you know, it, you, we said you, you know, you're the, the creator of the faux Mike Stoops. Um, mm-hmm. And just tell us a little bit about what, what brought that about or a little bit about yourself as much as you want to share tell the sooner fans about yourself all right well i'm a i'm a i'm an open book if any of my friends would tell you like so i have to you guys might have to shut me down i say too much sometimes but um i i started to fake my or po mike stoops account just i don't know man it was po Fellini was still kind of at his height back then and really rocking that stuff and it just i i really enjoyed reading his stuff and seeing how people interacted with him and it kind of just struck me from that and it was more just like a novelty for me um and i guess it still is that's all it is is a novelty but i really discovered that i had a lot of fun interacting with ou fans like sooner fans the way that i did and i realized real fast that i was a really good like frustration outlet man people beat me to death and i was like i kind of <laughs> got into it like, this is nice like i'm actually providing a service to people you know and uh that's why i put that in the, the twitter bio is providing anger management for senior <laughs> fans since 2011 like that's kind of what it became and it uh it makes like i don't know some people might hunt me down and crucify me for saying this everyone's got their own point of view but it makes like the really hard losses a little bit easier to be honest like i found that talking to people and trying to be the adult mike stoops makes me see it from a little bit wider perspective because i get too serious man like i i've for many years been way too serious about sooner football you know now when you say like tough i wonder losses. if i should see counseling at times and but um <laughs> it's it's just it's a really fun way to interact with people um, and it's a really fun way. Like I enjoy the games more, like doing that with people and having them have something to beat on me about. And I've met some really cool people doing that. Um, so it's, it's a, it's kind of my escape from reality too. You know, like the Twitter sphere, as long as there's not too much politics going on in my timeline, I really, really enjoy being on there. And, um, real life, I'm 37, about to be 38. Uh, deliver packages for FedEx deep into Arkansas's bunghole every day. Um, so basically oh the state God. of Arkansas, because it's pretty much a bunghole, isn't it? Oh, man, that's, <laughs> it is. It is. Like, Make fun of where you are. Arkansas, Peach. No, but, Arkansas. But it is, man. Like, it's, if Arkansas is the bunghole, where I deliver is kind of like the hemorrhoid. Um, <laughs> it's it's uh interesting job every day, man. I, I have delivered some... I have delivered some ingredients, let's just say. I know that's what I was delivering. <laughs> get out there three hours from anywhere, and I'm like, how do I give this to this dude who clearly, who he could he could end me and make me and my entire van disappear and nobody would ever even have an idea. <laughs> Not think that I'm suspicious of what I'm delivering to him. Like, dude, I've got three cases of Sterno, four metal trash cans, 60 gallons of bleach, um, you know? Like, uh, 
<laughs> okay, man. Hey, I'll tell you what. I am totally not suspicious of what I'm delivering to you right now, and I'm just going to leave your property. Is that cool? You know? Yeah. Like, you Concession that? sign that says <laughs> crack sold here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, my, yeah, yeah. I, you, know, I'm, you know, you said you're originally from Oklahoma when we were talking earlier uh, down in southeastern Oklahoma, which I'm from, you know, I told you, McAllister, Oklahoma. And uh, my dad grew up out in the Hartsarn, Tallahena, all that kind of area was his running, you know, running grounds. Oh, yeah. And we used to go deer hunting. In the out, yeah, no, we used to go deer hunting when we were out there. And he'd always tell us, you know, when they were younger and stuff, we'd get in our tree stand or wherever. He'd tell us not to wander around. And he goes, because there's people out here that will shoot you for wandering around. And if you wander into something that looks like a still, just wander back out. You know, don't don't look yeah. around. Turn around, he goes, because, you know, and this was on, you know, not public land, but it was people he knew land, but it didn't matter who owned it. It was, it was a, you just didn't wander off. You, if you didn't know where you were going, you just right. didn't wander off because some folks down there right. during that time were serious right. about their moonshine. Right. And, and yeah, I'm, it's a different substance, illegal substance these yeah. days, but still true. Um, I love to go. I'm not as much a hunter as I used to be, but I love to go out exploring, taking photos, find old houses, old abandoned bridges, whatever. I love being out and just kind of exploring. And yeah, no, you can, you you have to kind of, you know, CYA. You got yeah. you got to be careful where you go because, you know, it's not uncommon growing up in eastern Oklahoma. Like, what is it, like once a year, twice a year, somebody just like go missing and they never find it. Nobody know what happened to them. Like. We all know what happened to him. Yeah, we all, yeah. Nobody knows what happened to him, you know? No, nobody's going to say it. <laughs> but Yeah, exactly. Like, it, it's a, I mean, it's my home homeland, and I love it to a certain degree, but the truth is, if you don't deal in meth or chickens, you're not going to make money. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> or dentist. Oh, no, wait, dentist. There's not any. Yeah, there's not any dentist. <laughs> so. Hey, Justin, earlier you were talking about uh, the full mic stoops makes it easier for people to deal with the losses are you talking about iowa state or <laughs> georgia <laughs> oh man man that's those are both rough aren't they like yeah, they are but they're different <laughs> right they're, it's it's all different like and it depends on whose perspective you know you ask like my perspective is different than foe mike's perspective foe yeah. mike has a perfect perfect <laughs> flawless game plan <laughs> And it's just the player's inability to execute his brilliance on the field, you know, and yeah. transfer from paper to, to grass. But, yeah, I question all the time trying to trying to find ways to make semi-logical excuses as, you know, the Mike Stoop, supposedly. It gets harder and harder all the time, you know. Yeah. And, oh, man, I, I, there's things like, what do you do with three down linemen against the power run team? <laughs> How do you spin that as a, a doltish, uh, you know, defensive coordinator? What do you do with that? Yeah. <laughs> You, you know that you know other than like you said it's the personnel that i have out there i can't trust to put them in anything else well right. you know he's running out of excuses too because he's getting some depths now and he's getting getting a lot of uh he's got to be on the hot seat for real i would have thought last year would have done it um i was like seriously okay do i like take my followers and all this stuff and just like kind of quietly step into a closet and come back out as whoever the new defensive coordinator is, or do I stay Fo Mike Stoops and tweet from the bowels of the stadium plotting revenge against, you know, Lincoln for the rest of the eternity? <laughs> what do I do with this? I knew he was canned. I just knew it. And I was so surprised he was not. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Like, this year will be interesting, though, in my opinion, because he does have some depth um, with, with the recruiting classes coming in and with you know, he's got some pretty decent returning starters. We do. Like, they're they're all young. They're all young. I count, what, one senior on the entire returning roster, but it's it's got to be make or break time. Dude gets a raise. He, he stays on. And, yeah, we're, what, 101st defense in the entire country, right? Mm. Isn't that right? Uh, well, I think at the end of the last year it was sixty-seven. Yeah, was, please don't say that. If, yeah. if that's true, please don't say ever say that again. There was probably some particulars that we were ranked one hundred and seventh or one hundred and first or whatever. Well, you bring that up, and let's let's just kind of jump right into this because while we were on our vacation, you know, we timed it just perfect where everything with the Big Twelve is happening. But 
right. the the Big Twelve uh, preseason all Big Twelve team came out, and the Sooners got seven, um, you know, a league high seven um, players on the preseason Big Twelve, but not one single defensive player, position player, made the team. Right. Uh, now, of course, Bookie made it. Uh, Brendan Radley Hiles, as you know, expected newcomer, or he is the newcomer year. I guess that is an award they give already for, for the preseason. But no position players. What are your thoughts on that? Did did you flip out, or uh, as I, you know, I think many people did. You know, I, I looked at it and I thought about it, and I was like, "Yeah, this isn't right. This is not okay," um, because. Or oh you when I, I I when I went and looked at it though and tried to look at it from like a, a kind of a step back perspective I looked over who's returning and looked over who we have you know Caleb Kelly's really to me the one guy that I'm like okay if we were gonna have a defensive guy I'm thinking it's probably gonna be him but do we I mean if you're looking at our roster based on last year's performances. Is there really anyone there that that's going to raise a lot of eyebrows? If you're like, hey, how in the world is he not on there? Like, like say, short of Caleb Kelly, you don't have a Travis Lewis or a Zach Sanchez or Tony Jefferson or any of those guys. We really – because they don't have – they're not seniors, man. A lot of them are sophomores, they're juniors. They just kind of – and this is just my kind of step-back perspective looking at it is, None of them really made a ton of waves and really made a huge name. It kind of doesn't surprise me that we don't have anyone on there. And you throw in that we, you know, just got torched, completely torched, game after game after game. It doesn't surprise me. And I think that it's probably fair as it stands. But bigger picture, is it okay for OU not to have a defensive player on you know, the defense of all preseason, all big 12, like absolutely freaking lutely not. No, you know, you're what's right. wrong. You're right. And, you know, I did the exact same thing that you did. I was like, wait a minute. You know, I was like, right. we got to have somebody, you know, and that's the only person that came to mind was Caleb Kelly. All right. You know, it was right. just like, you know, okay, well, you know, there's Caleb. Well, who else? And I, I couldn't think of anybody else either, you know, that, and, right. you know, Kelly's a good, you know, obviously a good, you know, linebacker, but really there were two plays last year that stood out for him at the end of the year, which was the fumble recovery for a touchdown against TCU and against Georgia. Um, but other than that, what else did he do the rest of the year? I don't have, you know, complete stats or all that stuff. We don't, you know, we don't right. have all that stuff, but I mean, we look at it from a stand, a fan standpoint, you know, the same as what we try to have, you know, yourself look at is, well, who else could we put on there? And I couldn't put anybody else on there. Right, right. I'm, I'm the same way. Like, you know, and remembering, like you just said, it's a key point, remembering from a fan standpoint, because we we get attached to guys, their personalities, their Twitter accounts, their their personalities and, and who they are, and think, man, I love this guy. He's great, and he's a pretty good football player. But, yeah, you step back out into the rest of, say, the Big 12 or the rest of the country – okay, well, what's his numbers? What do his numbers look like? And do they stack up against everybody else? And they don't. I mean, I'm not speaking, this is like a generic example, but, you know, they don't necessarily stack up. They may not. You know what I mean? Right. He may not be the best linebacker that the Big 12's putting out there this year. You know, you kind of have to, it's a really good point you make. Um, Other guys that I thought were good last year, but they didn't get enough PT, like if they'd had the whole year. But I'm really digging Trey Norwood and Parnell Motley, man. Like, Motley had a rough stretch, but he really came back pretty strong. But Trey Norwood, you know, I live in Fort Smith, and he's out of Fort Smith north side. And so I'm kind of like, I I kind of pulling for him. And, man, he looked really good last year when he got in, and I'm excited to watch them this year. They may be guys that – if they have a season like the little flashes we got to see last year, they may be all Big 12 preseason next year, you know? Right. Well, see, and here's another little stat I'll throw out at you that I was looking through today on this stuff was um, it had you know, it, the last time Oklahoma didn't have a Big 12 defensive player on the postseason was 1999. 
Okay, so it's I don't know when it was for the preseason. So maybe we're going to win a national championship yeah. next year. <laughs> so, right. uh, you know, hey, it's been, well, huh? yeah, it's <laughs> been since 99 that the end of the season, um, there was no sooner on it. So, um, you know, I, th- I, I think, <clears throat> you know, maybe by the end of the year, you know, I mean, preseason is preseason, you know, we, you know, we, it, it's all, right. you know, um, media speculation it's the me and that's what it is it's the media's take on who the all big 12 is who knows caleb kelly may be on the the you know the all big 12 team i i think you know if if uh bookie works you know does what everybody's expecting him to do he's going to be on you know forget the newcomer he's going to have the position whatever that ends up being um Mm -hmm. and then i think there can be some other ones that step up but and I'll just kind of kind of jump into the um, Big 12 Media Day with what you or follow up with kind of what you said. You know, Lincoln Wright has said the same thing today. The defense, they're expecting it to be better. It's going to be young, but it, they're expecting it to be better. Can't be anything but better. Can yeah, it? I mean, come on, it better not be any worse. Yeah, you can't you can't do much right. worse. You know, you, you know, you can't be much worse than than 67th. You know, and yeah. and and be competing. If it is, then Mike, Mike's going to get that call on the on the, on the runway. <laughs> Listen, Mike, you don't need to get right. on the plane. <laughs> yeah. I want to tell you, it's like I would, I would. That would be gold. That would be Twitter gold for Fo Mike Stoops to get the lame kissing treatment. Oh man, that would be Twitter gold. <laughs> <laughs> but let's face. I mean, you know, I'm like you. Or I think Rob's like you. You know we're fans okay and we you know for the love of god we want the guy to do do well we want it you know he he right. didn't he didn't forget everything he ever learned about football i mean he's had good defenses yeah i mean we were tough yeah. at one point and you know we want him to do well but there comes a point you know it's just like you know with josh heupel as, as the offensive coordinator you know he's the, he was the golden right. boy of oklahoma football we all wanted him to do well mm-hmm. But when it came right. down to it, it was just like, "Good God, we can't keep watching this type of offense." Yeah, it was bad. You know, right? And right. I often wondered that about Bob. Like, as like, it's, I mean, Bob to me strikes me as a really good guy. Like, he just seems like he's a good human being. And my brother and I used to talk and kind of speculate: Is it possible he's too good of a guy and he has too much loyalty, like to a Josh Heupel? Because you've still got to go out there and win football games, and there's a pretty good stretch of time i mean i was at that stinking baylor game oh my god we got roasted i was there in baylor's allocation of seats that was one of the most miserable games i've ever had to go to (laughs) um and it's just how long do you stick with it like it seemed like it was too long sometimes you know yeah and and i i think you got a you made a good point there is that you know and i think it's a good fault to have you know, we're, you know, we hope that we mm-hmm. can all be loyal to, you know, to a degree. Um, but I, I, you know, I think he was loyal to Josh as far as he could be, because if anybody knows how the Oklahoma fan base is and the, let's face it, the administration and everything else, I mean, this, this football team is a business. I mean, it's a revenue generating machine. And oh, if, yeah. if you're not winning games, you know, and, and when when the podcasts and the sports shows and the sports radio shows are all like, you know, we're not doing anything offensively. We're in that same boat this this year or this past year with with Mike. Our defense mm-hmm. was was ter- Our defense kept teams in in the games. Absolutely. You know, and uh, right, and that's what fans' yeah. reactions were. It wasn't that Iowa State, you know, beat us. It was. Our off our defense got beat by Iowa State with a middle linebacker playing quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, it, it was kind of like a, it was almost like a byline joke. Like, I mean, yeah, you got beat by the middle linebacker, throw tossing the ball around. That, that, no, not, that's that's a, I would say. If, Biblically speaking, that is an unforgivable sin, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, well, it's like getting somebody, me and Rob to come out of the stands and, you know, Rob, I'm the tight end, you're quarterback, let's go. Yeah, because I'm know? not running. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, it, and, it, 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 uh, it just didn't make sense that, 
um, you know, I think this is, you know, and I think everybody agrees with this is the year, you know, because, you know, we've covered it on other podcasts. You know, you, you got to remember, we, you know, we lost two games last year. We were in the semi, you know, in the semifinals where we deserve to be. But right. there were four other games we could have lost one possession away from a loss. And, oh, that's, yes. and that's Baylor, Texas, Kansas State, and Oklahoma State. You know, we, uh-huh. we were that close. Uh, Whoa, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. What? Sir. What? <laughs> well, that's true. Oh, no, okay. no we, we didn't almost lose to Oklahoma State. <laughs> yeah. We, no. We didn't no. almost lose, but, you know, ha- we were running out the clock, and when Sermon busted the – Seven sixty-five, whatever it was, yard run right. to ice it, but it was a five-point game well, at that point, you know. Yeah, and I think I think I feel what you're saying because that Oklahoma State game, you know, every year it's just turned into to a freaking drag race. Um, yeah. It's just become a sprinting match, and I'm sure it's entertaining for people all over the country, but it's also embarrassing, you know. I mean, but I I think I see what you're saying in that the way Oklahoma State was scoring, if, say, we hadn't scored first or if we had missed one possession putting points on the board, it could have been us playing from behind the whole time and them maybe icing the game. I could, I, If that's kind of what you're saying, yeah. like, I follow that completely. Yeah, I mean, look at, look at Kansas State. You know, Kansas State almost beat us playing boys club football. Oh, Gary. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay, Rob, I'm you know, you know I'm right, okay? When when you know, we we coached little league football together, our sons played together and we also coached Sterling Shepherd, okay? Right. In the 4th grade, Rob, what was our play in the 4th grade? <laughs> Tight and reverse. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was give the ball to Sterling. <laughs> oh, that, oh, you fourth grade? Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, fourth grade. Yeah, fourth grade. Yeah, give the ball to Sterling. Yeah, give, give the ball to Sterling was our was our playbook. Okay. Yeah, we had other plays, but that's what Kansas State did to us. They ran their quarterback right up the middle. You know, on, on basically a quarterback. You know, a power eye quarterback keeper. Right. That's all they did, yeah. and we never stopped. Never stopped it. Yeah. So. How do you, how do you not, I, no, I'm with you, like, how do you not, I've, this is a question I have, I've never understood, and I mean, I'd love to hear what you guys think, what in the world is wrong with, okay, we're playing the first half of football, and we're getting torched, I mean, just absolutely torched, it's not working, and we, how many times last year, and over the last few years, have we seen us play a lot better in the second half, come out having made adjustments, um, if you're getting torched in the first half, this is like a legitimate question because I don't actually coach football at a collegiate level. Why is it so hard? What's so bad about and halfway through the first quarter or the second quarter saying, guys, this isn't working. Let's swap yeah. it out. <laughs> Let's, change it yeah. Let's do something else. Yeah. You know, if, uh, I, I just. I, <laughs> many times ahead, I have said, I want Mike, and he doesn't owe us any explanation. I know that. But I would like for him to say, we are running this stupid-looking defense that's getting us torched because X, Y, Z. Whatever those things are, I want to know why he stays in a 3-4 when that puts a person like Stryker or Oboe you know, out in coverage when they should be rushing the quarterback. <laughs> I mean, every fan right. is sitting there right. you- going, what are you doing? Yeah, and, and- – <laughs> Every fan right. and even even the quote experts that we've had on the podcast have said, you know, we're 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 in the four three. We got our guys, you know, our best pass rushers in the back, you know, back in coverage, and we're giving the receivers a 10, 10 yard cushion. We're not just in a four three. We're in a four three prevent. Okay, where we're got guys off the ball. Why are we not bumping those guys and sending somebody? To disrupt the timing because everybody will tell you Big 12 offenses are timing. You know, or, oh, yeah. you know, Baylor, um, Texas Tech, they're all timing. Oklahoma State, they're timing pass plays. You disrupt the timing, you disrupt the play. And I just want Mike to say why. Yeah. Why, why, what, what is to me that's football 101 or defensive football 101? I'm like you. Right. Rob's like you. We're not paid 
nine hundred and something thousand dollars a year to coach football, but you know you got to do something to stop, like you said, getting burnt. I mean, and right. as a fan, I would much rather see us getting burnt. You know, bumping and running and blitzing and blitzing absolutely than getting burnt by. Um, trying to prevent getting burnt. That's what pisses me off <laughs> is we're in this 4-3 right. and everybody off the ball, and we're still getting burned. Mm -hmm. So do something right. different, Mike. I mean, for the love of God, for the you know, for my heart health, for my neighbor's ears, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> they, for our sanity. Yeah, for our sanity. Do something different. And, and it just doesn't make sense that, I don't know if if it's just his personality is I'm going to do it this way or what. I mean, I'm like Rob. I would like for him to just, you know, I would like for him to sit down across the table <laughs> from me and go, here's why, you know, dot, 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 because nobody and can, he, nobody can figure it out. He can even add the words, you idiot. Here's yeah. why, <laughs> you idiot. Right. Okay. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. But now I understand. I understand it. Thank you. Now, you know, but, right. you know, it just doesn't, yeah. doesn't make sense. No, he doesn't. I don't. I don't understand it either. Like you, you've got a prolific pass rusher, like you say, in a, in a striker or, and and they're in coverage. Why are you covering a flat? Why? Right. Why, in God's name, are you dropping <laughs> into coverage when you should be, like you said, breaking up timing? And how many times do we see, can somebody break up the timing and, and see some great defense happen over the next few minutes? Really throw them off? Like I mean, that happens thing there every game right? right i mean at some point we rush somebody and you know that's like the big twitter cry what you look through your timeline after that and it's like everyone's losing their mind oh my god look what happens when you send some pressure right? <laughs> right. Yeah. like everyone sees it but it cannot be a coincidence <laughs> <laughs> but i wonder too like as I've tried to, I'm a very, I'm a, like an analytical kind of person and it's stupid because I analyze things that absolutely, you know, have no effect on myself or humanity at all. But as I'm looking at this, I'm going, what could be going through this guy's mind? And one of the things I've always come back to, and it's probably wrong, this is totally hypothetical, but what if he's sitting there going, okay, I'm looking at paper and these wide receivers that we're playing against, these guys are running four twos. My best D-backs running a four five. If we go up here and man up and we bump, they're going to start burning us and we're going to give it up in one play. Let's keep it, you know, deep cushion. Let's run our extreme prevent defense right. and drop everyone in coverage and just try to keep it in front of us to slow it down as much as we can. We know they're going to score, but let's try not to do it in one play. And that's like the only logic I can come to. But the problem is, is they still carve us up and score in one or two plays when they hit that gigantic seam that runs from, you know, I don't know, L.A. to New York, and they can basically <laughs> walk into the end zone. And you say, okay, well, I, maybe that's your logic, but or let's say I'm Mike Stoops. Hey, that might be my logic, but crap, this isn't working either. What are we going to do? Right. we got to do something different because it's still a horse race and we're losing, you know? Right. And, you know, I, I, one of the things that, that I still think happened was, um, you, know, you know, prior to Bob leaving, I think him and Mike had an idea, okay, of a defense and how they could stop Big 12 offenses, okay? And I, I even think it went back to um, um, Venables, okay? They were getting smaller, smaller defensive ends, which I think they were wanting to make them coverage ends, you know, put them up three, four, four, three, back and forth. And they were getting smaller guys. Okay. Right. I don't know, you know, smaller DBs, everything was smaller. And I think they wanted faster. And then they realized it's not going to work. One, it's not going to work in the big 12 Two, It surely ain't going to work when you go up against Clemson in the semifinals. You're eventually you're going to get beat right. down. Because look yeah. at what they're recruiting now. Now again, this is this is Lincoln's team now, and he has to say, "I want bigger, faster, stronger guys." And they are they are getting commitments from some giants. You know, six five, six six defensive ends. Oboe is six one. Striker six one six two. Yeah. That had to be a philosophy of 
the Stoops brothers going, we got this, we're going to fix it, we're going to stop these Big 12 offenses, and then went, well, that's not going to work either. And let's right. go back to what we did before. Maybe we're getting the best we could get, and that's, right. that's all we could get. I don't know. Because when we had the great defense, we were bigger, faster, stronger, and meaner than everybody else across the line from us. I mean, the Tommy Harris's, oh, yeah. the Dvorak's, the Teddy Layman's, oh, the Rocky Kalmus's. Yeah. Those guys, you right. know, were eating nails and you know, crap and thunder and all that other nah. stuff. Not that these guys Those that we haven't had have been great. Mick reference, by the way. <laughs> but not not that these guys we had haven't been great. But it just it was a completely different style of off of defense than what we've seen. And I think that maybe it's Lincoln turning it back over to Mike, going, "This is your defense. This is what I want." Are you in agreement? He's going, "Yeah, I want. I want." you know, the big giant meatheads, you know, and I say meatheads in a loving, you know. Yeah, we love them. Yeah, we love them. <laughs> I mean. It's it, a term of endearment. Yes. You know, and, and I'm glad to see that, that that's what we're we're pulling back in. You see these six five six six defensive ends and these defensive tackles. Um, I just went blank. Old boy from St. Louis who we find out he has a Young. T- torn Mike, ACL. Michael Young, right? Is it Michael Young? Or is it Thompson? Michael Thompson, I think. Yeah. yeah, but he has a torn ACL. Find out, found out he played his junior and senior year in high school on a torn ACL and didn't know it. Good <laughs> you know, that's, that's and he's not going to get to play this right year. There. But that's the type of guys we're getting again. You know, and that, that's and get with that man. Like, hey, dude. By the way, your intestines are hanging out. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even notice. Like, they freak out. Like, <laughs> yeah, the guy. What was it? Ronnie Lott when he played for the Forty ers uh, mm-hmm. broke his pinky and clip it off. Yeah. They said, well, um, you're not going to be able to play in the Super Bowl. You know, it's broke. We're going to have to tape it up. You're not, you know, cast it. You're not going to be able to play in the Super Bowl. And he said, well, can I play if you cut it off? And they said, well, yeah. And they said, well, cut it off. I mean, that's the type of yeah. guy <laughs> that you want. That's, that's hardcore. I mean, that's, that's next level shit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they don't make them like that's that anymore. Cool. Yeah. You know, you, 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 like if Rob said, they don't make them like that anymore. But I think we're seeing some yeah. of these kids um, that we're getting that are like that, and that's the mentality that we, you know, that we want back at Oklahoma in our defense because it's not acceptable to the fan base. It's not acceptable. I don't right. think to the university. I don't believe it was acceptable to, to Bob, um, and right. I don't think it's acceptable to Lincoln because what I heard him say today was. They somebody asked him point blank about the defense going to be better, and like you, know, you almost he almost had to say, "Well, it's got to be better," hmm. you know. But he said it's right. young, you know. But you know, we're really happy with the young that we have. So I don't know. It, it we've said it all along, you know, last year, and it's time to turn the page and start looking at this year. But if we right. were the number, you know. 45th defense, 35th defense in the country last year, we win the national title without a doubt. Oh, yeah. Instead, we throw oh, yeah, I agree. We, we throw this. I, I always say it looks like a, a spaghetti strainer defense out there that, you know, it, yeah. <laughs> it, it holds the water. It just keeps it from draining as fast. But. It's kind of like throwing golf balls to a volleyball net. Really. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's going to it's going to catch every one. That's a good a- analogy. I'm going to have to yeah, remember maybe that. Maybe occasionally one, one of them's going to hit that top, that thicker top line or the bottom line, <laughs> but the majority of them are going to fly right through them and deep. Yeah. Well, hey, tell uh, us, tell us uh, on the faux Mike Stoops, share a couple of you know nutbag stories that have happened. Direct, oh, you know. Direct I, messages or a, actually in six years now, I guess. Or what year is it? Twenty eighteen. Started in twenty eleven. So six, seven years now. There's been a lot of things happen that were just <laughs> gosh. Some of them are hilarious. Some of them are my God. I've had people come in my my mention, not my mentions, my my inbox, like straight up threatening me, and I'm like, dude, I'm not the real my dude. <laughs> like, hold <laughs> on. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> Uh, do you know what foe means? Um, and and there and probably not because like I mean foe is not like real common terminology in southern states, but yeah, and or central states. But we, man, I've had that, and I've had 
the one one of them I kind of feel bad about, like this story. This kid out of Dallas, somewhere in Dallas, inboxed me one day. This has been like probably four years ago, five years ago. Was right, just uh, I hadn't had it very long, and he he's like, "Hey man, you need to come down to my high school and and come check me out." And blah blah blah. And I thought at first he was kidding around because I'm like, "Oh well, my stoops, I've got like you know 150 followers at that point, right?" And I'm like, yeah, man, that'd be really cool. I was kind of playing along with him. Well, as the weeks went by, I started to realize he's still, like, inboxing me, and this kid's, like, serious. He doesn't get that I'm actually not my excuse. And then I was like, well, crap, what do I do now? Because I'm going to make him feel like a complete idiot if I tell him, dude, I've been, I'm not real my excuse, and he's going to think I'm an ass because I've been, like, leading him on, but I wasn't meaning to. So I kind of, like, I didn't know what to do with it. Like, I felt so bad because I was like, I'm going to make this kid, like, feel like a complete idiot, or I have to keep lying to him <laughs> pretending to be so Mike Stoops, or real Mike Stoops. And I was, so I kind of just, like, slowly quit messaging him back. <laughs> I feel bad about that one. It, it's <laughs> funny, but it's not funny, you know? Yeah. Um, I've had... Like, this honest truth, at the time, I mean, until recently, I was very happily married man um, with a beautiful daughter, so I have no, had no intentions of anything whatsoever, but there's been more than one female <laughs> slide into my <laughs> inbox, and and uh, that's always kind of funny. I'm like, you have no idea who I really am. What if I'm like 5'3", okay. 406 pounds? <laughs> a, light you know, just, a light bulb just went on. Over Rob's head. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Shut up, Terry. That's happened a couple of times. I had one girl, like, I think I freaked her out. Just She probably figured out the creep or something because she just, like, messaged me. And she's like, oh, I really love your account. It's really funny. So where did you go to high school? And I was like, well, I went to high school 20 years ago. And, and she was like, oh, wow, you're, like, really old. And I'm like, yeah, I, like, really am. <laughs> and then she just, like, disappeared. And I was like, God. she's probably like, what a pathetic loser. And I'm like, uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but. But, um, and then I've had a couple of good interactions. Like, I, I that's kind of, like, two of my best stories, I think, is when we were in the Champ Sports Bowl before Clemson threw a couple of D-cell batteries in a tube sock and beat us to a bloody pulp. <laughs> um, we, uh, I was tweeting at Champ Sports Bowl, and I was like, so, because uh, it's Champ Sports, right? I was like, so are you guys, like, are you going to provide the jock straps, or should we bring our own? And anyway... They tweeted me back, and they were like, we suggest that you buy new. And that was a highlight for me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, uh, what about the, the cup itself? And they didn't respond to that one. Yeah. That's understandable. <laughs> but, um, and then, uh, what else? Roy Williams, our boy Superman. I, I put together a GIF here. Like, this was just maybe eight months ago with that. Like, it's in the last year. I, I remembered a hit that he put on Tatum Bell back and it was unfortunately a game we lost to OSU but he absolutely just destroyed Tatum Bell and for the last few years I've been like I really want to make a gif of that and I've been all over YouTube every year I go back and like somebody's going to have uploaded some of the older games and find it somewhere and this year I finally found it and oh my god it's such a beautiful hit he just absolutely took his head off and so I put it into a GIF format, and I tweeted it out, and I just kind of mentioned, it, you know, Roy Williams. I was like, you guys remember that time Superman rung Tatum's bell? And it was Tatum Bell, and I thought, that's clever and stupid. That's perfect for adult like Mike Stu. And anyway, Roy Williams himself, he tweeted me back, and I forget what he said in the first one because I was just, like, shocked. I was like, oh, my God, Superman just literally tweeted me, not <laughs> really me but the fake person that i'm pretending to be but it doesn't matter because somewhere on the other side of you know the state of texas or wherever he happens to be roy williams just tweeted something specifically to me about <laughs> something i said so i i responded with a gif of this girl hyperventilating in a brown paper bag <laughs> and anyway he tweeted back to that and he put like little emojis. He had an ambulance and like a hospital and then like a big crying laughing face. And I like literally, I think I, I, I messed myself that <laughs> night. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> Roy freaking Williams. Yeah. Just 
tweeted me. Yeah, and not only tweeted me once, tweeted me twice. You know, like wow. Yeah, that, so that it, was it's, that, that was the highlight. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, as fans, when you do something, we've had Billy Sims respond uh, to some of our stuff. Um, which when you see it, you're like, Oh, Holy crap. <laughs> you know, it, what? Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, Lincoln's yeah. liked a couple of things. Uh, Joe Castiglione. Uh, and oh, wow. when, when we, when they we, all blocked me. <laughs> when, when we first started doing this, you know, we were just trying to come up with topics, you know, get a following and stuff before we had started having fans on right. and we did a poll, you know, who's the best running back in, in sooner history and it got put out there and billy sims was obviously you know he ended up being the winner of the poll i think we had maybe 75 80 votes or wasn't mine like and terry's choice yeah. <laughs> but um joe washington when it put out there he tweeted on you know he put a tweet out on it okay. as and going you know i've seen them all since you know uh, since my days at oklahoma and you know you cannot uh, cannot overlook greg pruitt and I was like, "Sir, I'm sorry. We weren't leaving anybody, <laughs> anybody out. Oh, you know, <laughs> it was. That, you know, uh, there were write-ins, and we had the poll and stuff. And yeah, he was cool about it. He goes, but there, he goes, I'm just telling you, there's none better. You, you know, you got to start at the top, and that was with Greg Pruitt. Everybody else. That is awesome. Yeah, I, I am. Would've, yeah, I would have died. Yeah, been like, you, you I would. I felt yes, like sir, I, I felt sir. like we offended him. You know, it was like, sorry, yeah, I did too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we didn't. You know, I mean, how you leave out little Joe? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, we, people man. wrote it's, in and stuff, and but I uh, did write in votes, and we just picked some names out of the hat. And but right. you know, he he was all that's, good with it. That's incredible, though. I mean, that, that's like a Wayne's World moment when he sees you know they see Alice Cooper, and they're like, "We're yeah. not worthy. <laughs> we're, worthy. We're, <laughs> we're worms." You know? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. I, I know that. Hey, this is like not even Fo Mike Stoops related, but here at the you remember the Utah State game that we had too much trouble winning, but it was our 800th win. It was kind of a thing, and we went up there to try to see that, and they had the 2000, some of the 2000 national title squad there signing things, and I took all my Sports Illustrated, um, or the ones from that year, because I have all of them from, you know, since about... Well, since about 2000, when we started being in Sports Illustrated again, I was 20 then, and, you know, we had spent the better part of my teenage years in the dark abyss. Of, I mean, really, Oklahoma football in the 90s was kind of like our kind of like our bubonic plague. It was yeah. really the dark ages. And, you know, fortunately, it kind of gave way to a renaissance, but we, I, I had the, uh, both of the, or all, what is it, there's three, right? I believe there's three issues of Sports Illustrated we were on that year. There was the commemorative issue, then the one from the, yes, there are the national title, and then one earlier in the year. Yeah, the and Nebraska, the Nebraska game. We were on the Nebraska North. cover. Yeah. And I took those to have I say cover the whole magazine. I took those to have them signed. Stood there in line the whole time, and who was up there? We had uh, Alan Patrick was one of them, and Torrance Marshall was the most notice- notable of the group. And I was like, oh, my God, this is Torrance freaking Marshall. And I'm not kidding you. Like, I put those down on the table for them to sign, and Torrance Marshall picked up the the national title cover uh, issue, and he started thumbing through it, and he goes, oh, guy, guy, I haven't seen one of these since. And then one of the other guys spoke up since 2000, and they all started laughing. And no joke, those I think there were seven or eight of them sitting there. All of those guys passed my Sports Illustrated back and forth, thumb and through them. It didn't matter. There was a thousand people behind me. And they were looking at these Sports Illustrated, and of course they all signed them and that. I was like, oh my God, Torrent freaking Marshall sitting here. And for some reason he's impressed that I have the Sports Illustrated about him, and I'm going to go home and die now. You know? <laughs> Yeah, so that, the, was, that was cool stuff. Yeah, but well, Rob ran into Coach Merv. Yeah, a couple of days ago, he t- tweeted out a picture of him and Coach Merv. Yeah, but I also took a picture with real Roy Williams too, Superman. Yeah, you did that too. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually just looking for your Twitter address so I could send that to you. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. that is freaking awesome. That's good stuff. Like that's what I mean. I'm sure maybe that's the same in any state anywhere. I don't really know, but. It seems to be true with Oklahoma, man. Like, so many of those, it's like a family for them, and they, 
they're around. They're somewhere, and they're still involved. Even if they don't live in the state, a lot of them do. And it's just, it's kind of a way of life for them, and it's really cool because most of them really appreciate the fans, and they don't mind, you know, talking to people. You hear so many stories like that, bumping into somebody somewhere. I uh, had a friend, and whether he's telling the truth or not, I couldn't tell you, but in Norman, and they were, I think he said they were outside of the post office being a friend is and Mr. Switzer himself comes wandering out of the post office and walking down the steps and they looked over at him and they were, he said, me and Jimmy, we were just, our jaws were open. Like we were just staring at him. That, that's Barry Switzer. And he said, so he saw them staring at him and he just looked at him and nodded. And then gentlemen walked away and they were just like, yeah. oh, my, oh my God. Oh my God. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You have a good day, sir. You have a great day, sir. You know? That. Yeah. But they seem cool with that. Like a lot of these guys hang around, and I just think that's really cool. I yeah. really think. That's and a really you'll see, cool yeah, thing. Barry. Barry's like that. I mean, if you see him around town, I mean, people don't really bother him. They just say, "Hey," you know. Um, mm-hmm. One of mine with was similar to that was we were at a Thunder game, uh, and I was walking out of the Thunder game in the big crowd, and I looked to my left, and Barry Switzer's walking next to me, and <laughs> inside the <laughs> inside the Ford Center, and I just look at him, I nudge my wife, and you know, and I point over, and and I go, you know, I go, hey, coach, how you doing? And he's like, doing great. How you doing, buddy? And I was like, fine, and, <laughs> and just kept walking on. <laughs> but yeah, it was it's it was just kind of you know, shock, holy cow, you know, Barry, you know, I don't know how long he was walking beside me, uh, but. You know, long enough for me to turn and look and go, hey, you know, it looks like me right. and Barry are walking together, which, you know, would have been fine <laughs> if people thought that. But anyway, right, yeah. how much time I'm, we got left? I'm with him. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. But, well, I think uh, anything else, um, Justin, you want to get into? We're, um, I'm, I mean, really, you guys are. You guys are running the show. Like I, I mean, I I enjoy talking to you. I'm 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 excited to get on and talk. I've wanted to do something like this with forever. You know, my brother and I had even talked about for years. Like we should do a podcast, and just because we like to talk it, and and so this is just a lot of fun for me. Like I'm really enjoying this, and I I don't really have anything to cover other than follow Mike Stoops is fun, and if anybody's listening to this and follows me, like please know that I'm not really him and you don't have to come kill me. Um, and but but you are there, but you are there for them to release their frustrations on you. you I are am there for you to beat the tar out of me and I have fun letting you do it. And for any of the ladies, I'm no longer married. No, I'm kidding. I know I'm married, but I'm kidding about the way. Well, hey, be a little pathetic. Yeah. Um, anyway. Well, hey, man, um, we, we appreciate you coming on. And spending some time and sharing some stories with us and your opinions, you know, we love the 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 opinions of the fans because that's what we are, and we love giving mm-hmm. you know everybody the opportunity to, to voice those. And as the season moves on and we get closer, we're going to get a hold of you, and um, you know, hopefully we'll have you on after a you know, um, oh, a premier defensive uh, game, and won't have to right. worry about you know dealing with uh the angry crowds uh after a bad defensive game but we want to get you back on it's been a great time um and so that's going to be the podcast for the night and we thank everybody for listening boomer rob boomer terry and boomer justin sooner appreciate you guys thanks for having me on thanks for listening to the sooner football fans podcast If you want to be on the podcast and talk Sooner football with us, go to www.soonerfootballfans.com. Click on the How to Be on the Podcast tab, fill out the form, and we'll get you on. Boomer.